Um, thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, this is a, a, a great event, and we're glad you could join us. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping things. After the remarks, the mayor and, and everyone here is invited to tour one of the uh, residences here. It's actually the one on the corner. So afterwards, we'll walk up, and then any media that would like to ask follow-up questions can do so then. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to John Zerker. Thank you. Uh, before I start, uh, is Vice President Marilyn Greer, is she here? Would you come and stand with me, please? I was told to make this brief, um, <clears throat> which is hard for me, but I'll do the best that I can. Um, what a great day here in Nashville uh, and for uh, Casey, uh, where, I've <clears throat> where I've served for over 15 years. We've had our struggles and our plights in so many different uh, areas of community, but we're still standing and we're still here. Uh, I'd like to think that what we're seeing today is a model for the rest of the country and, of course, for the city. Um, there are two big announcements today. One is, is that my term will be up this year, after this year, and I will not be seeking the presidency for after this year. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, is that I was told to be, make it brief, but to share with you uh, some of the plights. Um, we've had our struggles, like I said, and uh, with uh, getting to this point. Uh, you see, the first development program that came through here, they, we would have had to move. But due to the struggles and the plight, we s stayed together and with the support of Mr. Harbison, I call him Brother Harbison, we're both Methodists. <laughs> And so we don't have to be so formal. Um, we work together uh, hand in hand with a lot of what you see today. Uh, the RAD came in, which is Residential Association, uh, no, Residential, oh, help me out. <laughs> Assistance Program, <laughs> Development Program. And um, so it helped us to be in position to be able to stay. No one has to move, hallelujah. I am truly grateful for that. Uh, and as we continue to grow, growing this plight, uh, this RAD is, is moving all over the city. We have a great mayor and a great CEO here at uh, Housing Authority. And uh, I'm also putting my head in the ring because I've been commissioned by God to continue to fight for social justice and to fight for this RAD and to be supportive of the city, uh, all over the city. And so I'm throwing my head in the ring uh, as far as letting everyone know that uh, the battle is still uh, at hand for us to continue to fight for low-income housing, okay? Affordable uh, housing is great, but for the least of the, we need more leaders and more folks to step up to the plate to be sure that that uh, happens. I have a couple of resumes with my, <laughs> here in my hand uh, for a couple of people here. Uh, you get one, and you get one. <laughs> to let you know, that I'm true to this game. And in as much as you've done for the least of these, you've done it for my Lord and Savior. So this is not something that I'm doing because I'm trying to get a pat on the back, but it's about service. And uh, that's about all I want to say. Now I want to thank you, baby. And uh, y'all look forward. Y'all keep eye on this woman right here. She's very awesome. She's very awesome. Um, with no further ado, this man that I'm about to introduced to the podium. He needs no introduction. You see, his mother hangs in all the Catholic churches. His dad has been known to write the greatest book of all times. His brother's been known to walk on water. I give you none other but my brother, the mayor of the city of Nashville. Thank you, John. <laughs> that was good. That was a good start. Almost as good as the weather. But, um, good morning, and thank you all for being here. I have a, a, a list of people um, to acknowledge who are here this morning, but before I acknowledge any of them, I wanted to acknowledge uh, the person who probably is, is as responsible for today as anybody. 
because he sent our city on a path many years ago, and that's the late Reverend Bill Barnes. Um, so it's hard to do anything around affordable housing in Nashville without acknowledging him, so I wanted to do that. I know Vice Mayor Jim Shulman had hoped to be here, but um, I, I think the governor has called, and um, I'll forgive him for that. Uh, we're here with, in Councilman Brett Withers' district. I see him joining us in the front. Council Lady Tanika Vercher, the chair of the Council's Budget and Finance Committee, had hoped to join us. I know Councilman Fabian Bedne, the first um, chair of the Council's Ad Hoc uh, Affordable Housing Committee, is right behind me. Uh, Councilman Bob Mendez has followed him in that role. I, I'm sure Bob is on his way. Uh, Council Lady Berkeley Allen told me she would be here. She's joined us here in the front. She has been a, a, a stalwart, an advocate for affordable housing all eight years that she's been on the Metro Council, and I thank her for that. Um, I saw Council Lady Nancy Van Rees has joined us, and Councilman John Cooper as well. Councilman DeCosta Hastings, Freddie O'Connell, and Colby Sledge all have MDHA properties in their districts as well, so I acknowledge them uh, even if they're not here. I also want to thank some of the other people behind me, Sir Norma Mitchell and Tasha Lashur with the U.S. Uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, they deserve a round of applause. Let's stop right there. The RAD program that you heard a little bit about has essentially um, given the city around $2 billion worth of resources that we are now putting to, putting to use, I think to better use than any other city in the country. But um, we are working hard with HUD to make sure that we are uh, taking full advantage of, the, of their offer to this city. Jim Harbison and Charles Robert Bone uh, from MDHA are here. Uh, Ralph Perry from THDA, my longtime friend uh, Kaki Friscus Warren, the chair of the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission. She and I, a long time ago, two or three years ago, served on the old Nashville um, uh, Trust Fund, Housing Trust Fund, Affordable Housing Trust Fund, before it changed its name to the Housing Fund. Marshall Crawford from the Housing Fund joins us today. And uh, Matt Wilshire and Hannah Davis from my Office of Economic and Community Development are here as well. So with that round of, uh, of acknowledgments and thank yous, let me get to the meat of today. Today marks the beginning of a bold new commitment to affordable housing here in Nashville. Today I'm announcing an unprecedented public investment in affordable housing by Metro government and a significant challenge to the private sector to join us in this great cause. Today, we are making a $750 million commitment, including $500 million of public money that will create more than 10,000 new units of, of affordable housing here in the next 10 years. Now, I've been involved in this issue for more than a decade myself. And I know how critical it is that we invest in Nashvilleians, that we invest, invest in helping our people stay in the city rather than getting priced out of this city. We're calling this 10-year effort Under One Roof 2029. It has four major components. First, a $350 million public investment in, M in MDHA to accelerate and build the Envision process. This infusion of funds also will allow the city to pull down more federal dollars for the Envision process, which is building mixed income communities in the core of our city. It is fundamentally important that we build mixed income communities that bring people together in one place. Data show that people who live in mixed income communities will be more successful in the long run. We, as a city, must be about the business of deconcentrating poverty. That's what the first $350 million is really essentially about. 
Second, we will make a $150 million investment in the Barnes Fund. That's a 50% increase over the next 10 years. It'll help nonprofit organizations build more affordable housing here in our community. To date, the Barnes Fund, which has been uh, awarded $28 million, along with additional leverage funds, has already helped nonprofit developers create and preserve more than 1,300 units here in Nashville. Third, I am challenging the private sector to get involved and invest $250 million or more in the next 10 years. I, have, I know and have already spoken with many of our, of our uh, important, wonderful corporate citizens here in Nashville, and that community is ready, willing, and able to make those kind of investments. They've just needed the right kind of vehicle and the right way to engage. The private sector will be able to fill a lot of gaps in workforce and market rate housing, which will be in their own business interest because they'll help keep more of their employees in the city, cutting down on commute times and gas costs. Vanderbilt University is already providing a good example of that, building multifamily housing for their grad students. So all of that adds up. I'll say it again. It should feel good to this city. $750 million in new public and private money going into affordable housing between now and 2029. And last but not least, we will continue uh, to proceed with 100 units of permanent supportive housing that we previously announced for those experiencing chronic homelessness. These 100 units will be built downtown with an attached homeless service center with bathrooms, showers, and direct links to housing and other support services and agencies. <laughs> Under One Roof 2029 is a multifaceted approach and a new approach to building affordable housing in Nashville that will stand out across the country. Nashville's economy is booming, and that is a good thing. Growth brings jobs and revenue, which means more opportunities for Nashvillians and allows Metro to do more for our schools, roads, sidewalks, parks, and libraries. But we have to make sure we balance Nashville's growth by continuing to invest in Nashville's people. The Under One Roof 2029 initiative will help ensure that we all move forward together. And this initiative is so important that I'm sending one of my best people, one of Nashville's best people to run it. Matt Wilshire has brought tens of thousands of jobs to our city over the past eight years, including announcements of more than 8,600 jobs just in the last year alone. As the city's economic and community development director, he did that. He is the one of the best and brightest business minds and public servants in Nashville. I can attest to that both from afar and from up close. Matt knows how to bring government and private sector and nonprofit leaders together to get things done. And I know he's going to do that as MDHA's new chief strategy officer, which will be a new position here at MDHA. Thank you, Matt. I, I'm guessing that Matt is the only person here whose parents came for this event as well. So. Uh, I just want, that should, that should let you know how um, excited Matt is about this new role. We share that excitement. At the end of this uh, uh, program, I'll be signing an executive order that puts all of these plans in place. And I hope that whoever succeeds me as mayor, and that will happen at some point in the next 10 years, but I hope later, later than sooner, later than sooner, will recommit to this effort through 2029 and recognize how critical it is to Nashville's future. Thank you for being here, and now I'd like to introduce my friend, Charles Robert Bone, the chairman of the MDHA board, which is gonna play a huge role in making this happen. For the record, uh, my dad is also here, but I think he came to hear what the mayor had to say, not what I had to say. <laughs> 
And while it's always an honor to be uh, introduced by the mayor, I would have preferred uh, Mr. Zucker to uh, have introduced me based on his uh, introduction. This is a great day for Nashville. Uh, on behalf of MDHA, our 300 employees, uh, our executive director, Mr. Harbison, the more than 13,000 families that we currently serve, and the thousand more families that we will be able to serve as a result of the under one roof 2020 announcement. Thank you, Mayor Briley. <clears throat> Today is a game changer, not just for MDHA, but for the Nashvillians who are worried about their place in this city. The opportunity to accelerate the Envision process will increase affordable housing opportunities for those most in need, but also allow us to do that in a way that deconcentrates poverty. This overall investment is the largest local commitment to affordable housing in our city's history. With this investment, not only will we be able to preserve existing units, but we will also be able to provide more than a thousand units for those that are deeply affordable, those that need it most. To put that in perspective, MDHA owns and or controls about 5,400 units of deeply affordable, those from zero to 30 percent on the AMI on the spectrum. It took us more than 80 years <laughs> to develop and acquire those 5,400 units. This will allow us to accelerate another thousand of those units in very short order. So, Mayor, thank you for your leadership, for your vision, and for your commitment to making it possible for more Nashvillians to participate in the prosperity of this city. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the chair of the Barnes Fund, uh, Kaki Friscus Warren. Thank you. It's always humble to stand in the shadow of Bill Barnes, but it's a very big shadow. And so there are a lot of advocates that are here that 20 years ago, 25 years ago, started talking about the need for a housing trust fund and that continue to advocate on its behalf. And I'm sure we'll look forward to working with Matt as he's strategizing on how do we develop more affordable housing in, e in Nashville. So each funding round, Mayor, you may not know, but we receive more applications than we can fund through the Barnes Fund. And we have viable projects that could have been started, but we didn't have that gap funding that the Barnes Fund provides. And so with this 50% more over the next 10 years going to the Barnes Fund, we'll be saying yes to more people. We'll be saying yes to teachers. We'll be saying yes to bank tellers and office managers. We'll be saying yes to city workers. And we will be saying yes to hospitality workers because they are the ones who keep our hospitality safe thriving. Now I was asked to tell you a bit of the numbers of the Barnes Fund and the mayor has sent some of them but I'm going to remind you 28 million has been granted through the Barnes Fund but that has leveraged over hundred and twenty seven million dollars that's four point five percent for every metro dollar that's put in our nonprofits are innovative and they're working hard to bring resources into our city we have built or are building 1,193 units, and we have preserved through renovation 113 units. And then there's a new number that I want to be sure you know as you're walking away, and that's 9.8 million. That is the amount um, available in the round that is currently open for the Barnes Fund, and applications for that funding is due a week from today. And if you want more information, Hannah, raise your hand. Hannah is our program manager for the Barnes Fund, and I'm sure she'd be glad to talk to you a little bit more about that application process. But after the numbers, it's really important that we put a human face on what housing means. The Barnes Fund increase that the mayor has proposed and that we'll thank city council members for their approval will allow parents to focus on their children instead of working a third job to pay their mortgage. It will allow people to sleep at night instead of fretting over where, how they're going to pay for that rent increase that goes into effect next month. It will allow fewer older adults to become um, victims to predatory developers because they will have renovated their homes and feel safe in the place they live. And for those with young children or for teenagers, like our mayor, um, it will allow the children who grew up here to come back here and live 
and call Nashville home, and that's what we want. So I am thrilled to have new resources for the Barnes Fund. We will use them with great stewardship, and it's my pleasure to introduce Marshall Crawford, who's the CEO of the Housing Fund. Good morning. Come on, where is that Southern hospitality? Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Thank you for the opportunity to offer and share some brief comments. I'm Marshall Crawford, the President and CEO of the Housing Fund, a private nonprofit CDFI which has served Nashvilleans for over 23 years. I'm really excited about this news and applaud the vision that the mayor has provided to us. Mayor Briley clearly recognized that government can address this problem alone. By challenging the private sector to partner and invest in affordable housing, we'll be able to house even more Nashvilleans. At the Housing Fund, we lend to both for-profit and non-profit developers who are committed to creating and preserving housing affordability. We have a long-standing partnership with the city. More recently, their willingness to support us in operationalizing a community land trust which ensures permanent housing affordability through a shared equity model. From this, we can see the full scope of what's possible when the city engages everyone in this work. We know that the funds we're talking about today will bring even more investment opportunities. The Housing Fund has a history of leveraging private investments. In the past two decades, the Housing Fund has loaned over $55 million to developers and individuals, leveraging a total of $440 million to secure housing units and increase home ownership. In fact, in 2018, we loaned over $868,000 for home ownership down payment assistance, which leveraged $14.3 million in private first mortgage investments. Come on now, I know that deserves a round of applause. Do I need to say that again? $868,000 leveraged $14.3 million in private first mortgage investments. This initiative shows great insight by Mayor Briley, who understands that we have to be intentional about changing the conversation and bringing everyone to the table is essential. Housing is not just a government and nonprofit issue, it is also an industry issue. And everyone has to be under one roof so that we can ultimately address our housing challenges in a very collaborative way. In closing, these public and private partnerships will be tremendously important to Nashville's success in addressing the challenges of our housing affordability. Thank you. And it is my honor to introduce a former board member of the Housing Fund and Councilman Benet. What a beautiful day. Look at this, a Nashville day, awesome. I'm, I'm very excited, so uh, I apologize in advance if I get like too giddy, but uh, I'm here on behalf of the Metro Council. Some of my council member uh, peers are here who had been strong advocates, Berkeley Allen, Brett Withers, Nancy Van Rees. I think I saw Freddie O'Connell there, there he is. Uh, John Cooper, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to have you here. We look forward to working with Mayor Briley, his administration, MDHA, the Barnes Fund, and many others that have worked on this issue for years to implement better affordable housing goals. Some of the people that have worked so hard are all around you, and this couldn't happen without everybody's help. I believe that affordable housing and preserving communities are a huge priority for our city. For years, many have come forward asking that Nashville be a city where everyone can afford to live and where people of all incomes and backgrounds can live together. That will take a lot of work, it won't be easy, but we are now taking a huge step in that direction, and I want to thank Mayor Briley for bringing this together and to start moving forward towards some very big, important goals. So at this point, I think the, the time that we all be waiting for, I would like to invite Mayor Briley to come forward, to come back to the podium and sign the executive order. Please give him a round of applause. Mayor. 
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.